Hello, and thanks for joining me. Well, this South Bend lathe that I have here, uh, it's kind of an odd size South Bend 11. It's a 1931 model, and uh, it's hard to find parts for it. So, and when you do, they're expensive. So I needed a steady rest, and a steady rest is to support the work out away from the chuck, and it drastically increases the capability of your lathe. So it's a good thing to have. Anyway, let me show you what I got. There it is. Once you get it set up, you can open it up and remove the work from your lathe and put it back. Everything's back the way it was. Now this is a good 10 inches away from the chuck, which would be impossible. That's a, like a scratch in the, in the pipe. Cleaning the end of that pipe would have been impossible without the steady rest, unless you got a much larger lathe. Anyway, this is what we're going to build today, uh, so let's get on with it. So I got this piece of pipe here. <coughs> I'm thinking I can make a steady rest out of that piece of pipe. New direction. I started looking at the steady rest on my uh, Logan lathe, and I think this is plenty of big. Basically, this bar has to fit between my carriage. Professional machinists out there are going to look at this and say, oh my god, what's he doing? I, but I don't know if I got the right tools to do this or knowledge. But as long as that doesn't move, I guarantee it'll work. Okay, I've got this marked. I want it that deep and right on that line. I need the corner on that line. It's not real critical. The depth is real critical. What I'll probably end up doing is going too, di too deep and then milling off part of this to make this level. Yeah, I think that's deep enough. In hindsight, I should have flipped this machine service against the back jaw of the vise like that and machined this surface. That way when I clamped it in the vise this way, I'd be working off a known square edge. This is unknown here. It looks pretty square. I think we'll be all right. I need to go just a hair deeper on that and we'll be perfect. Camera battery went dead. I just knocked the corners off of that for style decoration. What we got to do now is create some braces going to that. Not sure how I'm going to do that exactly. Shouldn't be too hard though. That's going to be enough to get a wrench in there. Yeah, I think so. And now, I really need to drill that hole now. Be easier to clamp it in the drill press and drill it. Okay, I'm trying to determine the length of my fingers. I'm thinking about three and a half. Two down, one to go. Ok, 
got an idea. I think that'll work. Probably should have gone a little deeper. I can also round the end of that. That'll work. I'm going to have to put some levelers underneath this drill press. Well, it seems to be working pretty good. These all meet pretty close to the center. Now I've got to weld it to the uh, piece that slides on the bed and cut it right here and here so that I can hinge it. Still got a ways to go. Got these box blocks all beveled. Got a hole drilled in the mounting plate. And I want to tack those right there.
Well, it seems to work all right. I might put a T handle on that. Well, I'm overall really pleased with it. I think if I was to do it over again, I'd probably make these a little wider. Like the braces going from here to here. Uh, it gives more room to get to the lock down right there. Uh, I made these smaller than most uh, steady rests. Most steady rests are probably uh, three quarter inch wide. These are five eighths. And this is a little thin here. You know what? I suspect, I suspect it'll work great. I think uh, the reason uh, some of the steady rests that you see on the market are thicker right here is because they're made out of cast iron, which is a little bit weaker than steel. So, anyway, that about wraps it up. Thanks for joining me.